Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to the International Paddock Podcast. What a really stupidly disgusting day outside it is. It's very wet. It's very meh. I think I would say that. And um, I'm thinking my co-host for tonight will say the exact same thing. Uh, Give it up for Mike, who's in the chat here. The only one that's actually in the chat currently who is talking. Uh, How are you doing, Mike? I'm all right. You're all right. Has it been wet down with you as well? Oh, it's always wet down here. Oh, well. It, it is, it's proper autumnish. It doesn't feel like summer, does it? It's damp and awful. It's just what it is, isn't it? How are we, chat? You, you, I, oh, 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 chat? Chat's all right, I think. Be all right, chat. <laughs> you have to excuse the clothes in the background. I was doing washing, so swear it on. Jamie's here as well. He's He's, he's joined the party. He's joined the party. Anyway, guys, we've got a lot on our schedule to discuss today. We've got everything from GT World Challenge Europe at the Nürburgring all the way down to the British Touring Cars, which Mike's going to be presenting for us as well. And we've just got some just general topics to discuss about Team Alba 43 and uh, Papa Champs and ERC today, as it's not been a really weird weekend in the sense of racing because Spa was interesting but shit at the same time. Um, for F1, so I don't really want to talk about that. It wasn't really a good race, so we'll just move along from that. Um, one thing I can say is that Oscar Piastri got his very first podium in his lifetime, but that's about it. Um, I'm hearing myself through my headphones, through somebody else's headphones and microphone, so I don't know if there's an I don't echo. know. You are, you are echoing. You are echoing, mate. I think it's coming from Jamie's. Two seconds. It's alright. Anyway, let's get started with some uh, general discussion today on the GT World Challenge at the Nürburgring. It started a very wet weekend and it ended a very wet weekend. There's no question about it that the wet weather played a part in a lot of cars be essentially being BOP'd out of the race but also the driving prowess of the Acodis Asp Mercedes team was um, pretty much on point. I mean, they've got probably one of the best driver lineups ever uh, seen in a GT series. And uh, yeah, they came out of nowhere and did that. So big well done to them. I'm going to get the results up for you just now. But, you know, it's very much a replica of the weather that was going on all week here with it deciding to be very warm for five minutes and then out of nowhere it rains but uh Nürburgring interesting track and that's where it is I'm just gonna get the uh GT World Challenge get that up for you because you know Nürburgring's always an interesting one We've been to Paul Richard. We've been to Misano. We're at the Nürburgring. Let's get the results. Here we are. It was literally... How do I describe it? 1-2 for Mercedes. And then Audi somehow managed to get third. In all of that. Which the Audi's pretty shit in the wet. And uh, they managed it. Let's let's have a look. Where are we at? I can't fucking find it. Aye, because it was a quite a long race. You've got the two points. We're just going to read out the main results from the end of the race here. The Pro Cup sta- uh, Championship was won by Raffaele Marcello, Timur Burgoslawski and Jules Gunon for the Akodis Asp team. Um, in second place was the 777 car of Maro Engel, Lucas Stoltz and Fabian Schiller um, for the Almaner race team, which... Some of you may remember actually used to drive Aston Martins. 
not too difficult to understand why they changed the Mercedes because I well I mean Aston Martin got BOP'd out pretty much and that's how it goes but that's that's where it's at and in third was Ricardo Feller, Mattia Drudi and Dennis Marshall in the Tresor Orange 1 Audi R8 which obviously we talked about that last week them no longer being in the championship uh, from next season onwards for new new cars it's only spare parts but here's the gap for you and this is why Mercedes were too overpowered in the wet 13 seconds to the lead and um, that means that he was 11 seconds behind P2 so at the end of that that is quite hard to understand why the Mercedes have been doing so well in GT World Challenge at the moment your gold cup winner was Mikolas Born. David Schumacher and Marius Zug in the Windward Racing Mercedes. And I'm going to try and see if I can find the Silver Cup winner. Here we are. And that was Clemens Schmidt, Benjamin Heitis and Glenn Van Berlo in the GRT Garasser Racing Team Lamborghini Huracan GT3. And Bronze Cup was Ralph Bonn, Tim Heinemann and Robert Renner in the Herberth Motorsport Porsche 911 GT3 R, the new variant, the 992. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That was your overall results from that race, pretty much at the Nurburgring. Very wet, very yuck, but the race, the racing was pure class. Uh, I watched a lot of the highlights this morning, and I'll tell you now. Even after watching some of this, the race live yesterday on the way, the way to work, and seeing the fact that Timor. Burgoslowski actually managed to put that car on pole considering he's a pay driver in some instances he's much better than Lance Stroll when it comes to pay driving he actually knows how to drive the car in you know in any way shape or form better than anybody else so that's interesting from him now moving on to chatting a little bit from Mike about the British touring cars at uh, Croft I think it was Croft they were at today wasn't it mm, yesterday it was Croft yeah so yep. chat away. I'm chatting. Yes, um, I've not seen any yet. I've just got the results, but um, I will be giving it a watch because um, the re reports said that there was a couple of good little races. But uh, pole sitter in the first race, uh, Dan Kamish. Dan Kamish, uh, pretty solid driver. Yeah, yeah. took his Ford uh, Focus, for, you know, from pole. Was not overtaken, took the race win. Um, Ford Focus actually dominated um, the first race with Ash Sutton. He was gifted second. Uh, Dan Robot Bottom was, was second up to the last lap and he missed his gears on the back straight in the last lap. So Sutton took his chance and uh, took second on the podium. Robot Bottom was third and Sutton took the win in race two. Kamish and Robot again, completing another Ford Focus podium for the second time. And then uh, in race three, Colin Turkington broke the Focus grip in the final race, taking his BMW 330i to a 3-point second win from Hyundai's Tom Ingram. In second, with Josh Cook driving the Honda Civic to P3 to complete the podium. And they're back at Knockhill in two weeks' time. Yep, we're up in Scotland for that round. I might, if if I could get it off work, I'd go to Knockhill to see that with my dad. How far is it off you? Uh, it's about a hundred and fifty miles. It's it's about the same distance, I would say. It's just outside Falkirk, isn't it? So or Dunfermline. So it's about just outside the central belt. So I could make it. I could go to uh, Knockhill. On the A9, you get the odd uh, sign telling you about um, Knockhill race circuit. So. You know, I don't think I've ever been to Knock Hill. I've been near Knock Hill. I've been within a f sort of five mile radius of it when I was down in Falkirk. But um, yeah, to be honest, I would love to go. Uh, a couple of years ago, I got free tickets to go, but I couldn't get off work, which was a bit sad. But um, hopefully I one got, day. I got halfway there once. What, by the, getting across uh, the border? No, we didn't even get that far. <laughs> Uh, Scott, my me, me oldest, he was racing. He did motocross and we were racing at, uh, in the inner. So right. in the circuit on, at Knock Hill. And we broke down at... Um, oh, God, I can't 
gas gas stang, is it, or something like that, on the M6. Broke down, so we had to call like off and make our way back home. That's sad. Apologies to not you. Not really. <laughs> November, not kill, uh, in Scotland. Yeah. No, I wasn't looking forward to it, to be honest. In a, in a tent as well. Wet and cold. Ugh. Oh, yes. But, I mean, think of it oh, this way, Mike. Um, Knock Hill is probably one of the most infamous circuits in the whole entire of the UK for its sort of history. The fact that it's the only international, well, the only national circuit in Scotland that still has current racing on it uh, mm. for, for upper leagues, whether that be uh, British Formula Championships, whether that be touring cars, whether that be anything. It's the only circuit that we have. It's actually technically classed as our national circuit. And what a circuit it would be to be a national circuit because it has got some of, some of the best elevating corners as well with elevation, your breaking points. It's quite a technical track. It's quite a technical track. Oh, I had, I got some uh, news actually. I was going to going to leave it till the end of the uh, broadcast, but I'm going to say it now. There's it. FIA, FIA people on the island of Tenerife this week. Is there? Are yes. Thinking about setting the rally up? No. Uh, I could have gone and watched the rally when I was last over there. Hmm. Um, Sternface went, but they are. It's been it's been a rumor for about ten years now, but they are thinking about uh, an F1 circuit. Interesting. The roads are pretty fucking yeah. dire, but yeah, interesting. What do you mean the roads are dire? They're not amazing on that island. It's the same with most of the Canary Islands. The roads are not particularly pretty. Well, have you been to Tenerife? I haven't been in a while, but I know people that well, have. Well, how can you comment then? Right. How can you comment on the road? Right, I can comment but, on uh, the road. I, 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 I need to agree with Andrew. Oh, sure. Hi, Jamie. <laughs> Who asked Hi. you, Jamie, anyway? Who asked you, anyway? Was talking to him, not you. <laughs> Jamie, have I ever told you that you're one of my best friends? <laughs> you have, actually. Yeah. <laughs> See, this is why. <laughs> Fuck you, Mike. We're yeah. right, you're wrong. But you say you've got the same fucking vest as him as well. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, anyway, so that was British Touring Cars. This is why you're a commentator, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Oh, thanks for that, thanks for that mate, because I've been called worse. That's yeah, savage. I'll, I'll settle for that. That's savage. I'll, I'll settle for that, mate. So, Thank you. No, that's, 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 that, no, this is why as a commentator, all he can do is comment on things he's seen. <laughs> <laughs> Without action on it. Uh, God. Um, yeah, we had quite an interesting week of racing on esports-wise. Uh, the Gamers 8 competition finished, which, to be honest, was quite entertaining. Um generally the, the whole stuff on Ren Sport is probably the most exciting thing to happen to sim racing uh, well actually since they added the F1 Challenger series in many ways and added F1 Esports because I think it gives any chance for anybody to have a shot at driving fast in a team and make big money you know these guys are some of the, the top racers that we've ever seen um, and I think you know, Lucas Benecke deserved the win. I think he drove well. He got punted about quite heavily in the last championship that they did in Germany. And, uh, you know, it was about time for him to get the win there. Um, James Baldwin didn't finish very well. He finished eighth in that championship, which is it's a shame because he did put all his eggs in one basket for the uh, the fact that he was when he was doing Germany. But... Um, in some ways, he did a good enough job to keep himself up there. I think he's be he was beating himself up a little bit about the overall... It's Sambo. Here he is. Sam's arrived. But, um, yeah, I think in, in many ways, right, when, you when you're racing online, it's what we're going to get onto next. There's sort of like that level of understanding and respect that you have to give to each person that you're racing against. And knowing that I haven't raced any of them, I have a tremendous amount of respect for them, for their the chances that they've been given, and 
the fact that they race well. But until I race them, or until anyone that I know races them, they're only just another driver. Because, you know, the world is filled with bigger and better drivers. The only ones that you're seeing right now are the people that are visible to you in the world of, of racing online. We meet loads of drivers that maybe haven't even competed at a money level who are capable of that. And actually just both, like, the fact that you guys raced the 24 hours, some of the guys in there probably were competitive enough when it came to ACC to go championship racing. And then the guys that we've raced against in this whole season of the, R, you know, the QRT RDC championship for the VCO qualifiers, good percentage of the teams deserve to go through. A massive amount of them do because they are very quick. And it just seems to be the teams that are going through in some instances are maybe not the ones that deserve it. Um, and that's the teams that punt people out of the way, punt to pass guys, and they're going to get a big wake-up call when they go into the big championship, I'll tell you that much. But um, mm -hmm. we'll see. Because they'll, they'll penalise heavily. For every bit of contact that you make, you get penalised heavy. <laughs> But we'll see how that goes when, when it comes down to it. Because we have a chance of qualifying now, don't we, Jamie? Yeah, that's a, a tidy little um, segue there, Andrew. Yeah. As I load up single grip. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, look, I timed it well enough, right? <laughs> yeah, you did. Yeah, you did. Um, but yeah, no, it looks like it's going to be quite an interesting final race this weekend. Um. I probably will not be racing in it because I don't think I'm going to ever be as quick as some of the guys that, you know, that we've got on the team for this you race. Might need, you might need to race in it because one of our drivers might be out. Well, it depends. I kind of want to spend the weekend with my dad because I haven't spent a weekend with him in a wee while, so. Yeah, I get that, but um, Brad has injured his knee at football. Ew, that's not good. Okay, then. I'll look into that. But yeah, anyway, um... We, we will ignore who's winning the Pro-Am, because they are definitely, <laughs> right, their, their grid rating on SimGrid in the Pro-Am is semi-pro. <laughs> their team is semi-pro. Um, but yeah, myself and Raver, or Tice, as he's known to me, and everyone on ACC on the PC, are currently P5, so that if we take PE ACC racing out, we're actually P4 and qualify for GT4. Um, we just need a good Watkins Glen, and then we are set for qualifying for the VCO Grand Finals. Which will be taking place between October and November. That's great, that is. We, um... Even if the second team don't qualify, they could be thrown into a batch of drivers for a qualifying we are the round. High, we are the highest placed rookie team, despite not being the fastest rookie team in this pro-am. The fact, guys that we the, race um, against are experienced. The high, the high, yeah, so our grid rating with me and Tice is 1,894. The team a point behind us is 2,091. So there's a big swing there. And mm. we, yeah, albeit we are a point ahead, but all we need to do is finish ahead of the number 46 Ferrari and we qualify, basically. Yeah, so, nice. Yeah, four hours of Watkins Glen this Saturday from the. Um, our, our practice was the 24 hour of Watkins Glen, which finished yesterday. Started on Saturday, ended on Sunday. <laughs> yeah, that's usually how 24 hours work, Andrew. No, they don't. <laughs> 24 hours is a day. <laughs> you can start at 12 o'clock in the morning, like midnight, and then go to midnight the next day. And that's 24 hours, and that's still technically within the same day. So. As long as it doesn't go a second over, it's a 24 hour race. There you go. In the day. Just saying. Cheers, Ted. I, I, I agree with Jamie. Back to the studio. <laughs> but, uh, no, you guys did very well. I was very proud to hear that. And the the fact of the matter was, as well, when I had a look at the, um, the overall results, 
and everything as well. I was really, really excited. I was excited. Um, at the fact that you guys managed to complete a 24 hour race with a disconnect and a big massive accident and still finish like was it P13 and you know without that big massive yeah. accident and that disconnect we probably could have finished like P11, P10 so I well, mean the disconnect happened on the lap on the driver was pitting and I was getting in the car mm. and we were in P11 at that point with a chance of P10 but it, it happens in sim racing. I it's joked weird. about it on the stream and said, we'll just say it was a DDoS attack. Yeah, yeah, we got tagged. Um, a bit like the virtual mm. and the mom. <laughs> yeah. It's fine. Yeah. It is a shame, but um, I speak on behalf of the team where I say that we can hold our heads high and like it was a really good race considering where we were after the start and my diabetes not playing along with yeah. what our run plan was um it's just the way it is though to pit after 20 minutes um to get someone else into the car um brad absolutely smashed it he had 12 minutes left on his driver's uh time remaining um so once he finished he couldn't get back in the car because well he had no time left um yeah so he completed five hours 20 minutes in total i completed five hours 15 minutes in total and the new driver completed five hours in total and i mean that that's like a feat in itself you know you guys actually raced with somebody that you'd never ever seen before you never raced with them before and, and who has ne and who told us has never driven the ferrari that was just yeah. The longest race he had done before that was an hour and a half. That was his first endurance race. And yeah, he was doing well. So it was like honestly amazing to see the fact that you guys worked so well together. And I'd be definitely excited to see that in the future as we, you know, move forward. And I think another big thing there is that we are back open for driver submissions for next for for the next sort of we chapter. Are. So um, and can I just take this moment to welcome our German driver into the team officially? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Daniel is now part of Team Alba Forty Three on the PC side, and I believe he's taken part in the Twenty Four Hour Spa with us as well. Yeah, which we've September. signed on for. Um, it's a charity race and we'll be doing everything we can to promote that as much as we can within the Discord as well. Um, it's uh, Simba, which is quite a... I think it hits home for quite a few people um, with the, the work that they do. I can't remember fully. I had a wee read into what they do, but... Um, yeah, I'm not too sure what they do. But um, what I do know is that there is an element of mental health support in there, which is something that we strongly believe in when it comes to international paddock as you guys will know if you ever joined uh, and seen the discord the we've got a massive emphasis on making sure that everybody gets the help that they need and if they don't feel strong enough to ask for help they can at least do something to help themselves before they ask for the help and that's what we wanted to promote in that side of things as well is as we move forward in the next chapter of not only team alba 43 but international paddock with a lot of changes coming in the next few weeks which will you will all hear about first on this podcast um a lot of things are happening to the discord a lot of things will be moving um either out or in to the discord and you guys will get a chance to be a part of the community in many different ways that you have never seen before with a lot of different ideas that still potentially need to be pitched to the likes of Sam and Mike who are sitting here right now. Um, but things happen very quickly. I do also quickly. have something I need to pitch to all three of you after this podcast in private, if possible. Yeah, well, we'll have time. There's no issue. So, um, Good job. I don't really want to talk about the Formula 1. We'll ignore that. Um, Moving swiftly on. Yeah. Only thing I will say is, well done to Oscar Piastri, um, probably the only driver who decided to go ahead in, in the sprint and get a podium and then die from Carlos Sainz in the second, like the first lap of the race. So, uh, you know, uh, 
<laughs> rubbing is racing and um well it's only a bit of damage if your whole entire car gets smashed so um gg and well done but we move on and we chat about erc with mike mike what have you got in store with us with all the erc stuff that was going on with the end of season I'm we've been this. actually um there's been end of season awards nominations um, there's a list of changes to how races are run, which can't be discussed yet because they've not been finalised. But we've had some uh, end of season fun races on F123 that have brought up quite a few little glitches, but have been very entertaining. Um, we've been at China this week. We did the managers on Wednesday. We did the hundred on Thursday, which I'll come back to in a moment. And then we did Sunday last night, which was one of the best races I've ever commentated on. But we'll go back to Thursday. And a little bit of history was made by my fellow commentator, Goose, who actually won the 100. Yeah, get fucked. You, you, everybody in that race got Goose and he's all deserved it. <laughs> he actually won. Yeah, I know it's hard to believe, but he won. Sorry, I had better pace than everybody, and had better strategy. It's just what it is. They all, they have just have to learn that that I'm a strategy genius, and that the commentator he, he that sits me, and he, compliments on everybody else's driving can actually drive sometimes when he wants to as well. So yeah, it was a very proud moment for myself. Yeah. I'm not I washed. Say. I am not washed, you're guys. Te you're telling you're telling me. Oh no, it was Andrew that drove. So Mike is still only a commentator. Cool. <laughs> <sighs> No comment. But, <laughs> but, may I just add that uh, Andrew was brought down to earth with literally a bang last night in the Sunday race. Fuck he, you, he Sandy. Was, he did. He did lead for a couple of laps. Uh, I was on fucking you, pace. He made, it, he made the pits. He made the pit stop and was mid pack when he come back on and. Well, they didn't change my wing was, for first for a starter, was, and then I get shuffled. Oh, the Ferrari strategy! Well, I was in a Ferrari. Yeah. I was literally was driving a Ferrari. a Ferrari. Oh, you knew it was going to go badly yeah. then. I, do you know something? I just expected to get absolutely fucked, and it happened. So, look, at the end of the day, I actually... The fact was that I do so much better when it comes to, like, pack racing than I do when I'm just stuck behind, like, one or two guys that are, you know, struggling to even get DRS off each other. And, like, because of that incident I had with Sainty, like, at turn one where he just decided that my car shouldn't be on the track anymore and that I shouldn't exist, where I spun out, clipped the curb and got floor damage quite badly, that it was over. Like, at that point, the car didn't drive for me. I was losing traction out of every corner. I couldn't turn properly like I wanted to. It was over. It was over from that moment. And uh, I was essentially Be just driving that car for the sake of being an extra driver for a while. And I was like, oh, fuck it. I've, I've had enough. Deeply regret talking to Andrew after the race. Because Why? he, uh, well, he was screaming at me. I wasn't screaming at you. Swearing, screaming. Look, that is dumb out. You are telling me that I was screaming and swearing at you. It wasn't at you. If anything, I was angry with myself because I probably, if I had just like been a little bit more obedient to Mr. Esports in front of me, maybe I would have been still alive. But also at the same time, I'm not going to bend over and let him, you know, take an opportunity away from me. I'm going to race him cleanly and fairly um, within my rights. And, you know, I held my line. I held right hand side going into the first corner at China and he just cut me up. It was his problem. Genius. And if it was if it was an actual race, he would get a penalty. There is no question asked on that one because I was essentially just driving the car. There was nothing that I could have done to avoid that and if I had had to break at any point then that would have been game over so it's however you want to place the you know wherever you want to place blame but in my opinion that all because of him I ended up no longer being able to be in contention and that really upset me to the point where I was like what's the point <laughs> as everyone does feel after like any sort of I'm race like that but I'm going to pitch now. I'm going to fucking retire, bastard. Well, I didn't say that to you. I said that to myself yeah. after smacking my wheel repeatedly with my fist. 
Um, anyway, pretending you won on Thursday. Face. Yeah, I did. I did. You won on Thursday. I got, I got absolutely destroyed on when on Wednesday night by really fast guys. So I just upped my game on the Thursday and just realised that 100% is just two 50% strapped uh, strapped together, and that tire wear doesn't matter to me because I'm a driving god, and uh, I did very well. So that's what it was, in my opinion, anyway. I mean, it, the result may have been different if the you know if the server hadn't killed itself, but I will say now that I just gave it my all. That whole hundred percent. I came on the on the chat with you, and I was like, I am sweating like a motherfucking pig. Should we move on to the next thing on the agenda now? Yes, we shall. What you don't want me to gloat about myself anymore? Look, I have been We've out of league not. racing for a whole year, my friend. I avoided F one twenty two like not. plague. Fine. Same here, Andrew. It's nothing new. I'm back as well. Yeah, you won Move your on. first race back. I won my second, so take it. You're not as good as me. Get yeah, but I'm level. not. I'm not as good as Get you. Get on my level. Get on my level. <laughs> but like I won a 100% race. race. You only won a 50, so get fucked. Strategy king here. Anyway, moving on swiftly before Jamie can respond to any of that. Um, we had some more racing this week going on at Papa Champs, which Scott has arrived again after fucking stuffing his face because he's a fat bastard. Um, Scott, Papa Champs. Yeehaw. Right. So last week's Papa Champs Grand Prix took place at the Dutch Grand Prix, and since I'm so amazing, I won the race. <laughs> Uh, it was the closest finish in Papa Champs so oh, far, it was as well. and I have a feeling that we won't exactly beat that at all this season. Four attempts separating the top three at the line, and about two-thirds of attempts separating second and third. Brilliant racing at the front, so I very much enjoyed it. Unfortunately, though, Patrick won't be here this week. He has just taken the lead off the championship, so now we have three drivers um, in the playoffs. Tonight, though, we have the Spanish Grand Prix, and we have a lot of drivers who are making their debut tonight, because we've had a little bit of changes involving the driver lineups and stuff, through people being inactive or not enjoying it and leaving and stuff like that but that happens at the start of leagues and that's just how it, it it might be for the rest of the season we're hoping to uh have the highest numbers so far this season tonight and man up your pussies <laughs> i mean i'm but, racing uh, that occasion i'm not even racing we'll properly <laughs> what, man uh, up your pussies <laughs> It's only Spain without the S. She'll be all right. <laughs> I will see what happens. Uh, sample: We've got Jack Carroll making his debut tonight, and uh, we've also got uh, Mark, who's just joined tonight. He signed up via which a Mark Lightshot? Which Jack Carroll put up. Um, Lightshot, no. It's not these like guys, no. I am pretty sure that they're going to be very competitive tonight, and. I know that um, I've raced they've Jack raced... before. Ah, is he? Is he good? I, I he has some pace to him. Yeah. yeah, he has got some He's pace. Got some good pace. I remember he was in the F1 Twitter race in league. He was like the tier two winner or something like that. Uh he was certainly. It was tier two. I was tier one, so. They have well, a. We'll see if he's no, improved. F1, sorry. Since. I thought that was F1 Twitter. They had a. I thought they had a uh, team in the championship for the ACC race, but it's actually F1 memes that have a team, and they're competing in the pro class, and they're all Russians. <laughs> well, it's we'll like, see. It's uh, all right. Put your, put your grips, I, your grip packs he, away, boys. He does, but also got Meldav, who's um, making his debut. Probably we've got Bailey uh, as well, who's helping to the server. I don't know him. He... Uh, his AI difficulty is sort of what I'm basing it on. He says he runs between 90 and 95, so I don't think he'll be fighting at the front, but the best way to perform well in Papa Champs is to be there, or you'll be a square. Exactly. And we also have uh, Sus Jerry Jr., who... Um, Sus, well, I want to know who Sus, Sus Jerry Sr. is. But, um... Sus Jerry Jr. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's an interesting name. He better win tonight now. That's yeah, going to be fun. Tonight. Here, Mike, so... we're going to have fun with that tonight, aren't we? That's, <laughs> that's going to be good. The likelihood is is that we are going to see a new driver get a spot in the playoffs tonight with so many new guys. Patrick's not racing this week as Patrick well. Patrick not here. And I know for a fact that I probably can't win two in a row. If I were to put bets on anyone, I'd probably uh, take Vapid Coot 74's chances tonight. That's who my money would be on. Me if too, there would be anyone to get into that playoffs. Obviously, I haven't raced uh, at the Spanish Grand Prix circuit for quite a while. And yeah, we shall see how it goes tonight. I am very excited. Hell we yeah. have our highest numbers ever tonight, most likely. So we will see where that goes. Hell yeah. So uh, make sure uh, everyone uh, is watching this podcast right now that you're tuning in at about a quarter past eight to half past eight. That's when our sort of, that's when Mr. Goose and Mr. Uh, Mike will be going live. For and the good the news Spanish is country. I can actually qualify properly this time. Yes, you can. Good stuff, <laughs> I've tested it uh, today already, Scott, and it loaded up without yeah. fail. So... Um, <laughs> we'll see, obviously. Uh, I enjoy our partnership uh, at the moment, and obviously this Papa Champs is what, what also helps like International Paddock, because the, the, the podcast promotes the league, and the league promotes the podcast. It's... Yeah, that's what uh, it is, mate. Perfect, perfect partnership between us all, and I'm very excited to see what the fifth round of the season. Already five. This is already round five. It's amazing. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Well, and uh, yeah, we'll be yeah, moving so on. I'll be on this Twitch channel as well. Tonight, yeah. so. we'll be moving on with the yes. championship from eight fifteen tonight. We'll be live with all of the action this evening. Uh, it's going to be fun. It's Spain, and uh, everyone likes a little bit of Barcelona carnage, so let's see how that goes. Hopefully it isn't carnage, but uh, yeah, hopefully it's still good fun racing. Anyway, we move on to, well, the Xbox team who are racing for Team Alba 43 this weekend. Uh, both Sam and Kirby were decided Hello. to just take on 12 hours of Paul Ricard between the two of them, so... Uh, Fair enough, and it sounded interesting. Um, I tried my best to, to uh, be monitoring the airwaves between both both uh, chats <laughs> um, to find out what was going on and if there was anything I could do for them. And um, yeah, let's let's see from th from Sam's point of view since he's here uh, how the race went. Uh, let's just say everyone was quicker than me. There was no one who was quicker than at all. So I spent a lot of my time just moving out of the way of people. There was a couple of moments, just... <laughs> just trying to get out of people's ways in certain areas. Some people being a little bit too impatient. A couple of people complained. For the most part, everyone else seemed fine with, with, with where I me on the track. Um, Kirby performed almost to exactly as expected. He had the pace, had made a few mistakes here and there, but as I say. I had a good chemistry between the two of us, so I believe that's what kind of worked it well. The splitting up the stints sort of thing quite well. We had some shenanigans at the beginning because someone decided, even though it's a 12 hour race, they were going to try and, yeah, let's just say, make it interesting in turn one of lap one. So, yeah. I would completely understand that, Sam, if it was Monza. It can totally be won at turn one at Monza. But. <laughs> Literally As can't. Ty says, remember, a race can definitely be won, but at turn one, lap one. Oh, yes. But let's just say... That's how I took every said, race said I've done some, so whoever, far. So also, some, some, some people very clearly did not read the rules, because they said two long formation laps, and all I see on my far right is we it going. It's a car going just going full speed off the first start, and then we just see that side car slowing down a little bit, and then causing absolute chaos because I believe they actually brake checked them one of the leaders at turn one, and that set off an entire uh, train wreck right down down the field, and then a lot of people had damage. <laughs> Sounds about right for any sort of racing league. 
So the race sounded interesting. Uh, a lot of disconnects. It's Xbox. Uh, yeah, we um, as I say, we uh, we were uh, we were originally twenty first, then got demoted back down twenty third, and then finished twenty second, I believe, in the end. Twenty second, twenty. Not bad for your I first believe, endurance uh, race as well. It's more about the experience for you guys having a shot of that on the Xbox side of things, considering when we played on it, like the only way that we could ever do endurance was to do multiple, like do twenty four one hour races. And that would be actually mm. it would end up being like twenty second. Twenty first, yeah. yeah Kirby it was twenty first, yeah. First, so yeah. Uh, in many ways, very interesting the fact that they finally added endurance racing in some ways to Xbox. Yes, and, also having driver changes as well, I believe, which is a, fucking really unheard of. Relatively new from, thing on the Xbox. Yeah, literally. Which even Jamie yeah, didn't know, I know they existed. Because when the we used human. to do it, we wanted to do endurance ages ago, like <laughs> years when when me and Jamie first sort of met. The first goal was that we need to try endurance racing and we just couldn't find anything there was nothing this back 2021 almost and we just like we didn't even have the british gt yet and they like pc had had it for over a year at that point and we didn't even have british gt and they had had driver swaps since the start there was no reason for us to pretty much not have driver swaps and endurance racing in acc at that point because you know the xbox version it just, had been out for a... over over two years at that point and there was no reason for it not to be there so it literally took you disappearing onto pc and then figuring out a few years about a few years later there was driver changes it wasn't the case of figuring it out there just wasn't that op- option at all like um they just weren't offering it because it wasn't available the only way that anybody would ever ever to be run a sta- to actually do stable races was to do that sort of one hour stint constantly which yeah it we also really have to pay it. for our own servers mm-hmm. don't have to do that anymore either do yeah, we? you just no. set up your own own servers based on a lan connection and that's kind of like <laughs> again unheard a lot of. of things have changed and evolved on the xbox side of things yeah but the ACC. force feedback glitch is still there which is kind of disgusting the fact that yes i also exists. realized as well that when i was racing the ferrari occasionally you'd see bits of the mf bits of the uh, center co- the center console you see in the car deciding just to glitch out while you're just going like 200 in all fairness though straight, but yeah the new cars are new like they've literally been only in the game for less than a month for you guys and we are still relatively new to them as well like they're still updating bops as we speak because they had only was it like two months ago that they had well nearly two months now they added the new mclaren in the evil variant which Not we already knew was coming already yeah well sorry it didn't get nerfed it got buffed for specific tracks like i mean literally if you saw spa they were nearly half a second quicker than any other car because of the bop got fucked so like that's the problem like the the biggest issue is like these bops that they they regulate and that they don't admit to the fact that there's certain things wrong with the bops when they happen like i don't know why aris agreed to certain things because aris is a quick driver himself he should know like that some of these cars are going to be abused like the Ferrari before it got BOP'd was by far the, you know, the most anticipated car uh, for about two, three weeks before the first BOP change. And then the, like the fucking Lambo became a god, but it ate its tires. And then they tried to BOP everything in. In the process, they nerfed the fucking Merc because the Merc was overpowered in every track. They, they keep changing things like... I can understand it because they add new cars and everything has to be BOP'd so that everybody can keep up with those new cars. But the level of BOP is absolutely strangling the competitive scene at the moment because, yeah, it doesn't really affect us at a pro-am level, but like the pro standings and pro changes for a lot of drivers are now intense because you're getting halfway through a season and your car is competitive until that point and then they BOP it out and then you can't change your car anymore. And then that means that can cost you a championship. Like literally, the number fifteen car that we that we were racing at Spa was nowhere for the first two races. They got they shafted us at Spa at Silverstone, and they were nowhere when it came to racing in uh, Barcelona. And then the BOP came the day before fucking Spa, and they were qualifying on pole. Like I can understand it's it's Spa, but they would qualify it on pole by nearly point five on the next for the nearest Ferrari, which started in third. So like, yeah, but I don't know if they've changed the BOP again since the like the last race, then that's interesting. But for for EUB, it's overpowered for Spa. 
for the for that. They they really fucking screwed a lot of other cars over for being able to win against the McLaren. But it's how it goes when it comes to any sort of racing. And we've just got to accept it. But moving on, we've got Team Alba Forty Three sort of moving into a new era. We're starting to race on leagues again. Um, after well a couple of months out of racing on leagues and while I disappear for a couple of minutes because I really need to go and do something um, I'm going to let Jamie talk you through the process that Team Alba 43 is going to take going forward and I also have an announcement to make when I come back after he's made those sort of talks I'll probably be gone for about five minutes and then I will be back so Jamie, Mike Sam, Scott, make it work I will be back, I promise what am I just talking about? Just anything. Fuck. I don't know. I need to go and do something. I'm... We're talking about fucking. Professional. Right. Professional. <laughs> <laughs> That's not. Just go and talk about what's happening with Team Alba 43 while I'm gone. I'll be back in like five minutes. Now, uh, last week certified that I, uh, well, Sunday's race certified that I'm the best AC driver certifying. in Team Alba 43. And that's a fact, and no one can argue with me. I did a perfect apart stint. From the and... back when I um, show them your first stint, yeah? Yeah, apart from my first stint. <laughs> some fucking horrendous. Um, but on a serious note, I didn't get, um, I didn't say anything. Well, have you discussed the 24 hours already? Uh, briefly. I, well, I guess, sure we, I guess we could back. talk about the 24 properly. Yeah. Um, no, I was having... I, I was really struggling beforehand. I was really having doubts on whether I'd be actually able to do it. And I didn't want to disappoint the team. But then they uh, convinced me to to actually give it a go. It was interesting first watching went, as expected. Uh, first stint went as expected. Um... I think a lot of us were making lots of mistakes early on, and that cost us a lot of time. On top of that, a driver causing an accident and getting disqualified from the race. Um, that didn't help us either. Um, but as we got further and further into it, and once I got my second stint finished, we were in a very good position, and then... Who was it after me? Was it? Uh, it was after me. Daniel went in after you, I think. Uh, someone else before. Was it? Tice. was it? Tice. Tice was in after me, and then after his stint, we were in an even better position. But unfortunately, our disconnection um, towards the end of Daniel's uh, stint. It's literally on the of... on the lap he was going to pit as well. Which killed yeah, us. Yeah, that that just ruined it. But honestly, I I am so proud of um, not only myself but everyone else who you know for for for, for simply making it to the end. Um, I know I had probably the easiest job of everyone all day. Um, I wasn't in the car as much as everyone else, and that's understandable considering what I was. I was struggling with earlier on, but um, yeah, everyone everyone did a massively good job, and they um, and we had fun, and that's the most important part of it all. We had for sure, we had fun. We enjoyed ourselves. The result is the second most important thing. Well, considering where we were as... at the start of the race, where we were last, yeah, and had to bring the... it back as well to finish thirteenth out of twenty-one starters. Like, and we yeah. were running as high as 11th, potentially even could have got 10th come the end, had everything have gone smoothly towards the end of the race. But yeah, Tice had some immense pace, Brad had some immense pace, yourself and Daniel had some really good pace as well. Um, oh, for my standards, I was very happy because when I was at my stint, the leader was catching me, but he was catching it like I was within a second a lap of what the leader was doing. I wasn't lapped much on my second stint. I went into that second stint, and they were almost shouting at me on the stream because um, because I said you're about to watch a Scott Wet Sunday special, and 
to Kirby because he is on the live chat they're going shut up <laughs> or not most, to me Add most to likely while provided. I was driving and doing my stint one of many and uh, then I provided the Scott Light Sunday special and I had a clean stint I didn't hit anything I didn't spin the car I didn't make any any mistakes really and it's probably the best drive I've ever done ever really on maybe apart from the F1 game but I am over the moon with how I was and that means that we're even more prepared for this week's race the four hours which is the really important one for the team and hopefully everyone is better than what we were at the 24 hours because well we've had the obviously now. we have more experience <laughs> we've got we've had a 24 hour practice session on top of all of that but i will still sit around and we'll sit and get as many laps in in preparation for this week because i i love this i love the thrill of uh, of the team atmosphere i love endurance racing i love um working as a team of people and i love being a part of something so that's that's why we race and hopefully we'll get a we'll get higher than what we did in the 24 hours uh this week or at least one of the cars um getting a very very good result um but we have our ambitions we have our goals we we know what we need so all we can do is just do our best and see for sure yeah um all we can do from saturday is really push on and go again this saturday and i don't see why we can't why both cars can't get a um good result hopefully brad brad's football injury clears up and is still able to drive this saturday because i think we've got a good team if he can uh, obviously myself and Tyus are in our own car but the second car is still a bit of a question mark at this point as to who will be joining you scott but yeah either way i think we're Head. in a, um Beth. fuck it i can do solo <laughs> can i just I also interject real you quick as well uh, <laughs> i'm back sorry about that guys um yeah i was here in the chat interesting um, yeah go on sam i was gonna say on the xbox side of things before we move on we've obviously um i'm big thing obviously a few of the few of the guys in here already know I'm going to be moving, not fully moving on, but I will be absent probably from ACC come September time. For reasons outside of racing. Going to uni. A little unexpectedly, which I got earlier, the, about a few, about a couple of months ago, so then I've got that. And I'm going to be unavailable, but we will have a driver, I believe, someone very close to Kirby Space joining the team on the Xbox side of things, who we just need to prepare for racing. AKA Angelo and Blissimo or Angelo. Oh uh, yeah, Angelo. Um, Big yes. man Angelo. The man he, the myth the yeah, So he will be he yeah. He will be he will be so the Italian will be joining the the team on the the Xbox side of things and Kirby will be guiding him along the way as will I be helping whenever I can with setups that thing. But if that's probably to gonna well, be my Sam, I can race on the Xbox as well. Yeah. yeah. That's as I say. So we need to put Angelo and through a little bit of practice of GT3 racing. So he has some experience and you see as has some pace, we just need to get him accustomed to the wheels since I he'll, believe he'll he has done a lot of he'll running manage. on he's the a, pad. So, but a, yeah. He can't he's he's a can't very be racing ACC one. on the pad. And honestly, I think everyone who does ACC, it's in their best interests and, you know, to notice this and you just need to they say he seems Brian very close on pace. System, right? Turn the fucking racing line off. Yeah, turn it's... the racing line off on ACC. Honestly, Please you do. do not need it. You don't need it, really. F1 game is the only one I use racing line on. And I that's because I can't be arsed to take it off. Yeah, Yeah, I use, I use corners only on F1, but I don't use doesn't? racing line on ATC. I don't use racing line on a set of Corsa. Generally, yeah. F1 
and maybe Forza Motorsport would be the only oh, games Forza's that I'd different. use. Forza isn't a sim, is it? It's... Yeah, only like your arcadey type stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I'd oh well. Use, uh, a racing Trust line me, for... you will find you guys. You will find so much place taking that racing line off on ACC. Just learn the track. That's all you need to do. Learn it. You know, <laughs> you, most the most of the tracks, I'm fairly certain you guys will already know. Like Silverstone. The best way to do it is look at the colour of the track when you're in straight line. Coming into the braking zone, the colour of the track will change. Then you brake. And it, it's honestly as simple as that. Easy. Well, another news. Uh, this is from Earth Updates. Cars are now 31% more edible. Fast food will actually now be fast. And French fries are now renamed baguette fries. And uh, turtles can now swim 182% faster. What? Just earth updates. Well, that's an earth update. So yeah. to earth kind of. Uh, just, just casually, just dropping. I eyes was going to say, does the does the does it come with a does it come with a white flag? <laughs> yeah. When you, you, when you order a happy meal. <laughs> when you order a happy meal, it comes <laughs> it comes with a white flag in it. No, I mean, you're talking about baguettes. Sorry. <laughs> we fucking lost. Anyway, moving on. Half past six, Andrew. Going to have to go. Yeah, Mike, I will speak to you in an hour's time. Roughly. An hour, no two worries, hours time. No worries. No, God knows. The um, only hard work with the World Superbikes is just totally blitzed, isn't it? What a waste of time. Did I not tell you about the... Oh, shit. I told you about... To, to do the uh, British touring cars, but we forgot about World Superbikes. Go for it, Mike. Oh, mm. no. Anyway. No, I'm going to have to go because uh, there's people here waiting oh, for me. That's a shame. Sorry, Mike. Ooh. Hey, you know what this guy is? flight to Tenerife, isn't he? Uh, <laughs> the, uh, that's always a way to do it. Supercars race. They had the weekend. At, oh, I managed to uh, watch a little bit of that. At the city. Right, Aaron, so here's Aaron, my work. experience of right, watching bye, Mike. So I'll see you later. See you later, status. So, about an hour after my stint, uh, obviously, uh, they cut to the coverage live. I was watching it on my phone, and I was watching the build-up, and then next thing I knew, I was listening to an Indian commentary, uh, Indian man commentating on cricket, so... Uh... <laughs> oh, yeah. What the fuck? <laughs> the, the, the unironic thing, by the way, with that whole thing, I was at work, and they've got, like, a little bit of that on, because... What, Indian commentary? <laughs> no, it was, um... Just basically, cricket. I was working, and so the Leeds United football team were actually doing a friendly up here in Edinburgh against one of the teams yeah. I used to support. And that's how I knew about the fact of um, the V8 Supercars, is because what's one of the things that was on one of the TVs he had in the room. Oh, fair enough. Well, you're right, right, scum. Hmm... I, I didn't know who any of the. I'll, cars, I'll be honest, but... I literally know who two of the players were, but that was about it. <laughs> anyway, anyway well, like Bamford's important what's this thing. Like Bamford. You've got to make Andrew. Well, um, as you all know, um, life has been sort of, sort of strangling me the past few weeks, the past few months actually, um, with everything going on in my personal life. Um, with everything that's going on in my social life and then everything that's sort of going on that we've had to do and the hard work that everybody's been putting in for International Paddock and uh, Team Alba 43. Um, I generally think this is the right time to say this and my time as the sort of guy that's standing in everyone's way in International Paddock is uh, sort of over for the Team Alba 43 side of things. Um, I will be uh, effective immediately after the race on Saturday uh, stepping down as a essential team manager and will be focusing on making sure that the, the team runs effectively from afar. That doesn't mean that I'm going anywhere. It just means that, and and the team's not going to shit, because I will be leaving it in the capable hands of Jamie here. Um, I think he's proven enough to me over the past few months. And, and the everybody. Xbox side of things is run by me and Kirby anyway, so yeah, that side of I things mean, don't is worry still about that. 
I'll still be there for you guys, just not going to be um, as available as I'd like to be anymore. Uh, it's been such a struggle for me, uh, it's been quite a burden on my life. Um, I enjoy it, I really do, I enjoy the stress, but, um, you know, for this season, getting everything together now, I think the fact that the team's now in a healthy standing where we've got enough drivers, we're actually hunting for championships to, to race in, and the, the boys have now got enough experience to move forward, um, I've said my piece, um, I still will be the liaison with Mike when it comes to Team Alba 43. Um, and when it comes to big decisions, I'll still be there. Um, but when it comes to championships, when it comes to team orders, team everything, that's no longer me unless uh, there's something of discontent. And uh, by that means I am, um, as I just as I repeat this, uh, as of the end of race on Saturday, I am stepping down as team manager of Team Alba 43. And my duties will be uh, essentially passed over to Jamie from that point onwards for uh, a better no health of your team. Um, for it's also for my own mental health, my own physical health. I'm coming into a point uh, at this time of year, uh, August, September, and into October, where work picks up, where I become a lot harder to deal with personally I struggle through that time um, and I don't want to be throwing my troubles into team management and just trying to focus on keeping myself as alive as possible through that time and being the same lovely goose that everybody loves here which well I mean let's face it nobody here loves me that much but uh, I think it's an important No we take step. the piss out of you sometimes but that's But Sam I could take the piss out of you for, for just being you, but I don't. All right. Yes. And uh, I don't know this. Let's be honest. That's not mainly we take the piss out of Mike as well. But that's because yeah, the fact that he Mike take, deserves how many it. He takes to Mike, Tenerife. Mike fucking deserves it. He opens his mouth. He says something. And he deserves it. I love you really, Mike. But I do the same. <laughs> but you know, as you guys know, it's it's life. I have to. I have to trust the guys that I've got. It's me. kind of a bit like me to a point because. My kind of racing future beyond say one beyond this is a little bit uncertain as I don't know what's gonna happen once I'm finished with university. Which is where I'm going off to come September this year for three years. But like Sam, it's it's more the fact that I need to think about my own life now. And it's not a case of I'll I won't be racing. It's like I can't focus on having fun on a racing game or, or a simulator or or having fun setting things up with an international paddock and then also worry about a team. And, you know, I can't... The reason I put myself down as a reserve was because it wasn't my full intention to always race all the time. I couldn't. And it ended up being that way because of the driver situation. And now that we've got a stable team with drivers coming in and filling in spots when need to be uh, filled there's a level now where I think that I can pass it over to Jamie without having any issues um, with myself um, and I can just focus on myself now for the for the future until um, until whenever that be that I'm no longer needed there but really right now I'm still there but not going to be in the same capacity I won't be organising the team I won't be creating everything the boys know that from now, they if they need anything, they need to go to Jamie. As I say, so, Xbox is in good hands. Uh, well, I, that side of things is the in reason good I hands. didn't mention Xbox is that because I trust you two to run that fine, so there's no issues. And yeah, you already made me aware of the situation. It'll be so. a, as I say, it will be a three-man team when I am available, which will be most likely. Well, you Christmas. guys look, 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 you guys will find next year. It's fine. We don't need to talk about that Sometime right now. Next year. We don't have to worry yeah. about that. But let's move on to the sort of final few comments that we need to make about everything going forward. Big changes, as I discussed at the start of the stream to uh, the Discord. Big changes to the way that the paddock is going to be run from now on. 
we are now opening up the Discord specifically for every type of simulator out there. There's going to be a section in the Discord dedicated to trucking. There's going to be a section in the Discord dedicated to flying. There's going to be a section Happy in that flashing. Discord for trains. If you're interested in that, that's what we're here for. Because I think the paddock is, is a safe place for everybody to express their interests in the world of simulator games, not just racing. And I want the... I want everybody to be a community, I want everybody to have fun, and I think that's exactly the thoughts of both Mike and Sam in this situation. I am speaking for Sam and, that, and Mike there, but I think everybody wants to have a bit of fun when they're playing the game, and they deserve to be able to show it off for everybody to see, and everybody and get a chance to chat about it as well. So, um, <laughs> Going to have a place to ask dumb questions about the I PMDG. got you, bro! I got you, bro! <laughs> <laughs> Jamie's trained now. He knows what he's talking about. Trust me. Every issue that we had when we were flying, any issue any at all, the smallest ones, he knew how to deal with it. Um, and literally nine times out of ten, the incidents weren't even the plane. It was just us. Um, with me, with well, setting up the co-pilot stuff, which was interesting for your controls. But uh, we managed to get it sorted now. But either way, we're going to be now streaming flight simulator on this channel we're now going to be streaming trucks on this channel where it be ats or ets2 we're going to be streaming bus simulator we're going to be streaming train simulator if anyone's interested in that there's going to be something for anyone and everyone on this channel and i think constricting it just to racing is hard because we want I mean, everybody to be international interested paddock in is not specifically designed just for one type of racing exactly so um there could be an ATS online convoys. We'll be setting things up as soon as we get big enough. As I say, within the next few weeks, watch this space. You will get the announcements first live in here on the podcast as to what's happening with the paddock as we move forward. Um, but yeah, we're coming to a sort of natural end in today's podcast. We talked a lot about GT racing. We've talked a lot about um, just because GT racing is better than F1 at the moment. Yeah. And we talked a bit about the touring cars there at Croft. Fucking marble racing is better than F1. Yeah, I would rather watch a marble, marble race. Marble racing with a fucking be is better than six, F1. With Papa six Chops marbles tonight. fighting for the lead, right? And they've all got an equal playing and they're all named something stupid like Cooter. Um, uh, be well, honest, I'll even I think even but... was it uh, the weird sport of ch rolling cheeses down a field is probably more interesting than F1 oh, at the moment. By, by fucking far, mate. Like, there's no question. I, I would rather watch cheese wheels falling down a cliffside than watch an F1 race. But yeah, as I say, we are coming to a natural end in this podcast. If you are interested in anything that is going on in the paddock over the next few weeks, then you can join the Discord as I put it up for everybody right here. Bung, right there. Well, she does that. Heard. I forgot to mention. Um, I will be live on this channel Wednesday evening. Tell them why. Porsche Super Cup. Yeah, baby. Porsche Super is Cup. now a thing for Team Albert Forty Three. We haven't got any liveries made for the Porsche Super Cup yet, but myself and I'm sure a lot of people know mr wheeze we love are Weez. taking part in oh, the what, um name i had for him was the south Super african Cup. kimmy i know that from doing an yeah. interview with him or he's a man of few words like to know his real name is claudio rodriguez i know it does not sound very south african but sounds more south yeah, american we are taking part in lsr's um august cup essentially let me let me just get it up and we'll um, go through it. All the is for me, um, South African Kimmy still sounds better. Yeah, it is. It is the August showdown, um, and round one is this Wednesday at seven thirty BST, with two races. We've got the sprint race and the feature race coming to you from Valencia, and if Andrew allows me, um, that can be primarily on this channel. Will be as long as uh, well. When, so it it will be for this week, but when the uh, the season starts up for ERC, you will have to do it on your own channel. Unfortunately, yep, not but, a problem. Um, because ERC will be starting up in about two weeks' time from here. So, um, bear that in mind, chat, because you'll hear about that first. I'll probably be racing on the hundred this week. Uh, I won't be racing Wednesday night's managers, but I'll be racing the hundred this week, and you can f 
watch that live on Wallace 57 Seniors SNR on Twitch he'll be streaming that whole race as well so you'll be able to see the 100 and you'll probably be able to see the Sunday race as well because I'll probably be on that if depending on how well my shoulder holds up because I was in a bit of agony after that 100 on Thursday but we'll see I just was doing it for the boys they need an extra driver and I was in and I didn't think about my shoulder but it is an agony so um, when I'm doing anything but uh, probably at the same time as that I'll need to try and fit in a bit of practice if I am racing on Saturday or not but the priority for me is not to race on Saturday and to spend it with my dad because my dad's unwell. So we'll see how that I'll goes. But going on to end this, we'll be live at eight thirty tonight, back on this channel. So just keep keep here if you have to. Keep it open on your browser. I don't care. Uh, just go and watch porn in the background. Have us muted. It doesn't make a difference to me. Uh, but hmm. let's face it. I'm not sure it. that's the best thing, but okay. Either way, right. We are here at eight thirty live. We will be live streaming from eight fifteen tonight. Um, but the race won't start. The qualifying will not start till eight thirty. Um, live on this channel uh, for round four. Round four. Or round five. Five. Round five, five. in Spain, without the S. Um, because that's going to be a lot of fun to watch, and I hope you guys enjoy it as much as we do. Also going on in the paddock this week, just watch out for when we go live. There'll most likely be a truck stream going on at some point. Uh, potentially a mini sort of convoy on uh, probably ETS2 between me and Jamie. And if you're on ETS2 at that time, you can join us. We'll probably we can do doing... it tomorrow if you want. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look, I'm free most of the day tomorrow, so it probably will be. I'm free um, all day. <laughs> I need to get some mileage in because I've missed a few days. But We'll keep moving forward with everything. Just remember, everything is moving forward very quickly in International Paddock, and this is the place to be if you want to find out what we're doing next. So, guys, thank you very Drop much a for follow. watching. Yeah, thank you very much for watching. Hit that follow button, and if you're on YouTube, like and subscribe, because we've had a few people watching yes. on YouTube now. Hello, hello, you yeah. industrial little fellows. And um, I I'm appreciate And we're off the air in Korea. <laughs> <laughs> and I appreciate every single one of you for taking your time to watch every second of this podcast. Um, but yeah, thank you. Thank you for watching. And, and on that bombshell. <laughs> and on that on that bombshell, uh, it's time to say goodbye. Thank you very much to Scott, to Jamie, to Mike, to Sam for joining me here for episode five of International Paddock. It's been a joy to be here with you and we'll see you all next week for the next one. Goodbye. Bye. That's a very that's very accurate. <laughs> it is. <laughs>